everyone. My name is Devin and this is Quick Programming. Today I figured let's talk about Facebook's React Native. React Native is a way of creating native iOS and Android applications using JavaScript with React for the flavoring. You can develop using React Native on Windows, Mac, and Linux. However, you can only develop for an iOS application on an OS X machine. The purpose of this tutorial is to walk you through how to install React Native on an OS X machine. I have also installed it on a Windows machine, so as we go through the steps, I'll mention any gotchas. So the first four steps, pretty much, are installation steps for various different pieces of technologies that you need to run an React Native application. The first one is Homebrew. So if you click the link, it'll take you to its home page. You can copy and run this script. If you hit Command Space on a Mac, it'll open up the Spotlight search, and you can just type in Terminal in here. And then copy this, and you can paste it and hit Enter, and the installation will start up. Once the installation is completed, you'll have to install Node.js. You can install it using the website, or you could use brew to install it. Since you just installed Homebrew, you can type in brew install node and, and it'll install the latest version of Node.js. It'll also install the Node Package Manager, NPM, which is another tool that you can use to install various different technologies. The next thing that you'll do is install Watchman, and I'm just gonna install the next one too. Brew install flow. So you'll see I already have Watchman, so it failed on the first step, but it would essentially say the same thing for Flow as well. Another thing that you want to install is Yarn. So just go ahead and brew install Yarn, and then once that installation is complete, you'll be set. So that's pretty much it for developing for iOS apps. The last thing that you'll need is Xcode. So if you open up the App Store, and you can just type in Xcode, this is a free application for developing iOS applications. This is the tool, the IDE for iOS development. Uh, just go ahead and install it and, and then you'll be set for iOS development. The iOS setup is really simple. The Android setup is a little bit more complicated in my opinion. So onwards to the Android stuff. Let's do a little bit of a walkthrough. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is install Git. If you have Xcode, then you have Git already. So since we do, we're just going to move on to the next step. The next step is downloading the Android SDK. So just follow the link to download the Java Development Kit. You'll want the latest for whatever OS that you have. So I'm running a Mac OS, so I will pick this one. Once you have the JDK, you, you can install the Android SDK. So on Mac, they make it super easy. You just type in brew install Android SDK, and it installs and sets it up in in the brew fashion, I guess you would say. Um, you can also download it from the same website that Linux and Windows users have to use. Just click this downloaded Android Studio and download Android Studio link right here, and then it'll install. The next step is very important. If you don't do this, then your Android application won't be able to start. So the first step is to locate your bash profile or if you're on Windows or Linux, then just follow the steps for that. You can, if you don't know where your bash profile would be, uh, you can just locate it using the locate command. Just locate bash profile, and you can see that it's in my users slash devin directory. So if I use the vi command and go to users devin slash bash underscore profile, it'll open up and you can see the various other things that I have. This section right here is what you're going to need for, for the Android development. The React Native instructions tell you to do it slightly differently. You can do it either way. I just follow the same setup as everything else. The next thing that we'll do is set up the Gradle daemon. So just click this link and it'll show you how to install it or enable it really for Windows or Unix-like operating systems. Mac is a Unix-like operating system. It's based off, off Unix. So go ahead and use this command if you have a Mac. And what you'll do is copy the command and paste it into terminal and just hit enter and it runs instantaneously. So now that we have all that set up, let's go in and set up our Android environment. So in order to get into the SDK manager, the easiest way is to go to the library, Android, SDK, and go to tools and double click the Android. 
If it tells you to do any updates, installs, or anything like that, go ahead and keep those checked. Sometimes they'll automatically be checked already. Mine's already up to date, so it's not telling me to do that. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is it won't update the correct version of the build tools that you need. It'll update the latest version of the build tools. So make sure that you check the 23.0.1 version and install. Once you're completed with that, you can close out of the manager and we'll continue. Now you can install Jmotion if you want. It's another way of emulating Android devices. You don't need to at all. You can use the Android Studio emulators that Google provides. React Native or the Facebook Teams, I guess, uh, point is that the Jmotion emulators work a little bit easier. But I don't know. I don't think that the Google emulators are all that complicated. So the one thing that is a little funny is they have this screenshot and it's really out of date. So uh, at this point we have Android Studio. Let's go ahead and open it up and I'll walk you through how to create an emulator. So at this point we have Android Studio open. Let's go ahead and start a new Android project. This is kind of a silly way of doing it but it gets the job done. Once your dummy project is created, you can just basically ignore everything. The one thing that we really want in here is to click this. This is the AVD manager. And um, you can see that I already have four emulators. Let's create another one. So I don't have a Nexus One emulator. Let's pick this. If you wanted to emulate a tablet or a TV or a wearable device, then there's these different categories. And if you didn't necessarily want to emulate a, a Nexus device, then you can do kind of these generic devices down here. So this page is talking about the system image or basically the operating system version that's that'll be on the emulator. I would pick this 86 version or the 8664 bit version. And you can pick the latest version of the of the system image. So on this page let's give it a new name. Um, we want to give it something descriptive, so what I'm going to say is what device the emulation is of and what the OS version is. So if you wanted to change your device type or the OS version, you can definitely do that here. We're going to create an emulator that starts up in the portrait mode. For the graphics, if you have a great graphics card, then I would suggest you using this hardware option. If you have an okay graphics card and you have some software that really kind of speeds up and helps you along with your graphics, then you can pick this option. For in general though, if you're not like a huge graphics person, then I would just pick automatic. The emulators already start up pretty fast and they run fine without giving any of this. The automatic seems to work just fine. So once you finish setting all your options, hit the finish button and the emulator will start up pretty fast. Uh, here's a word. Whenever you're starting your Android app in React Native, you'll want to make sure that you already have your emulator running. You don't need your iOS simulator running, but but the Android application will not start and install in, unless you have a device connected to your computer or the emulator already started. And to start those, you just have to click the little play button. So that's how to create an emulator. The Windows version the flow is pretty much exactly the same, except for the fact that Google emulators don't really like working on Windows that much for some reason. Um, the Hyper-V and the Google emulators don't work well together. So uh, React Native has given you this setup that you can use to work around that if you wanted to. Um, Android Studio also gives you an option to turn off your Hyper-V if you want. To me, it doesn't sound like a good idea to turn off the Hyper-V. Windows uses it for a lot of things, and especially if you're a developer and you're working in, in that environment a lot, then you, you just don't want to do that. So uh, you might want to go forward with this, or there's another option. You can download the Windows Android emulators, and the easiest way to do that is using Visual Studio. Just download Visual Studio, include the Xamarin package, and the Windows emulators will be downloaded as well. So that's pretty much it for installing everything that you need in order to now install React Native. Uh, it sounds like a lot of work, but once you get it done, you only have to do it once. So it's not too bad. And if you have any problems along the way, you can leave them in the comments below and, I'll, and I will definitely get back to you on them. 
If you uh, have like an urgent need though, and you can also check out Get Facebook's GitHub page for all their issues. They have a fantastic resource right here. If you go, if you go to the issues page and on the GitHub, there's a ton of great information here. Uh, the team is very active on responding, and um, and you can just type in whatever issue that you're coming across and you'll usually find whatever you're looking for. So the next part is we're going to actually install React Native. Back in the terminal, you're going to type in npm install g for global react native CLI and just hit enter. I already have it installed so it was super fast for me. Um, and now what you guys can do is actually create your first project. So what I'm going to do is go to uh, the directory where I want my projects to live and I'll just type in the command react native init and then give your project a name. So my project name for this is going to be and hi installation will take a good one to two minutes so now your application has finished installation you can see up here it tells you how to run your ios app and how to run your android app the first step is to actually go into the directory that you just created and then you can run these react native commands so this will start up my ios application and this will start up my android application so i'm going to go ahead and run my ios simulator oh and before i forget you can see that I did a little bit of an update for Minimatch. Up in my installation of my application, I saw that there was a message basically saying that um, the version that I was using was really old. So um, you just run npm update Minimatch and it works. I thought there was a brew formula, but I guess not. So anyway, back to running my application. You can see that another console window opens up leave this open for as long as you have the simulator or emulator running it's the local server that runs for javascript so here's our first application the default application just says welcome to react native yada 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 so that's it for the ios application so now let's talk a little bit about how react native applications are structured like i said before you're actually developing a native application which means for your android applications you're actually creating behind the scenes a Java based application. And for your iOS applications, you're building an application that uses Objective C. And you can actually see that code for Android if you go into Android app source main. This is set up exactly like you would normally create an Android application. In fact, you can open this up in Android Studio and make any changes in there if you need to. And you might need to, and that's perfectly fine and acceptable to do. You can't do everything in React Native. React Native is mainly uh, a UI framework. So any like heavy duty behind the scenes stuff, you'll definitely want to use the actual native platform itself. And iOS, if you wanted to look at the code, you can just open up the project file right here and it'll open up Xcode for you. And then you can see that it's, act it's actually created a basic Objective-C application. In general, whenever you're creating a React Native application, you don't go into the native code and make your changes. You can, like I said, and that's perfectly acceptable. However, that's not doing React Native development. That's doing native development. So in order to do React Native development, open up the text editor of your choice and open up this index Android JS for Android development and index iOS JS for iOS development. So I have Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to open this guy up. And this is my React Native code for my Haya application. If I were to make changes here, I could run the simulator again and they would easily be seen. And if I go into, I'm in the iOS JS. So if I go into the Xcode application, I would see those changes reflected in Xcode as well. So that's kind of the high level of what React Native is, how to set it up, and how it's structured. My next video is going to cover the React Native tutorial. So if you enjoyed this video, please watch that video and you can get a little bit more information, a little bit more like how to do things. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you really like this video, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any comments, questions, anything like that, leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely get back to you. I'll see you next time.